are relatively low energy bonds. Okay. So, I hope I've convinced you that hydrogen bonds are important, but I love this table as another way of showing the importance of hydrogen bonds. Okay? And the reason I like this table is it compares three molecules. Three molecules that have very, very similar molecular weights. Water has a molecular weight of 18, ammonia has a molecular weight of 17, and methane has a molecular weight of 16. Very, very similar in molecular weight. They're very different in their hydrogen bonding abilities. Water is full of hydrogen bonds. Ammonia makes some hydrogen bonds, but not a lot. Methane makes virtually no hydrogen bonds. Look at the melting points of these three molecules that are essentially the same molecular weight. Zero degrees centigrade for water, minus 77 degrees uh, centigrade for ammonia, and minus 182 for methane. The same things are reflected in their boiling points. Water the highest, ammonia middle, and methane the lowest. What does that tell us? What it tells us is that the more hydrogen bonding that we have, the more attraction between the molecules, the individual molecules that we have. That's reinforcing, hopefully, what I told you earlier about the fact that that hydrogen of one water is attracted to the oxygen of another. That's the interaction we're talking about. Okay? If we want to boil something, we've got to spread things out. We've got to pull them apart. We have to break those hydrogen bonds. If there are hydrogen bonds to break, it's going to take energy to do that. If there's not very many hydrogen bonds to break, it's not going to take much energy. That's why the boiling point of methane is so low. It has virtually no hydrogen bonding. Make sense? I'm doing all the talking. You guys are looking like I'm putting you to sleep. And no, we're not going to stretch again today. We don't do that every day. Maybe we should. I don't know. And no, I'm not going to tell you a joke today either. I do have to ration my jokes. Is this making sense? Questions? Your eyes are getting very heavy. I mean, I feel like I could just hypnotize you at this point. Should I? It would be easier to learn, right? You hypnotize somebody and you say, you're going to remember every word I say, right? <laughs> Oh, wow. I went to class, my instructor hypnotized me, and now I know everything there is to know about biochemistry. Okay? You will only remember it if, if you're, you know, the person sitting next to you jumps like a rabbit. You know? If they don't know that, don't do that, then you're not going to do this on the test. It'd be great during the exam, wouldn't it, to have this rabbit jumping going on? It works. All right? Okay. All right, so that's the, the story of hydrogen bonds. We'll come back, we'll say a lot more about hydrogen bonds later in the term. Um, actually, in the next few lectures, we'll say a, few, a lot more things about hydrogen bonds. But what I want to turn our attention to now is something that is another important property of water, and that is ionization. Ionization literally means create an ion, and an ion, of course, is something that has completely lost or gained a proton for our purposes. Biologically, ionization is something that has lost or gained a proton. Why is that ionization? Well, a proton has a, a plus one charge. If I take a plus one charge away from something, it's going to lose charge, right? So if I take water and I pull one of those protons off, I end up with a molecule that's hydrox hydroxide which is an ion, and it's a negative one charge. Negative one over here, proton over here, plus one, right? Make sense? Add them up, it's zero. I put them together, they're zero, right? Okay? Acids have the property that when I put them into water, they lose a proton. Acids in water lose a proton. We think of acids as being proton donors. And schematically, we can write an acid as an HA. An HA is the starting material 
And after we put it in water, we make H plus and A minus. Now here's where your general chemistry class probably didn't do a very good job teaching you something. Okay? They didn't teach you the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. Okay? This is something probably half of you in here will struggle with on the first exam. A strong acid versus a weak acid. What's a strong acid? A strong acid, by definition, is something that when I put it in water, completely dissociates. It completely gives up every proton it has, and every molecule that has a proton loses that proton. That is a strong acid. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, is a strong acid. Because if I take HCl and I put it in water, let's say I take a million of those and I put it in water, I will end up with 1 million chloride minuses and 1 million proton pluses. And at the end, I will have no HCLs that I started with left. Every one of them comes apart. That's the definition of a strong acid. I want you to remember that. A strong acid completely comes apart. A strong base completely comes apart. If I take sodium hydroxide, what is a base, by the way? I haven't talked about a base. What is a base? Something that is capable of absorbing protons is a base. Now, I'm kind of fussy about the way I use the term base because I, I find that students get confused about weak bases, strong bases, etc. So the only kind of base, the only time we ever use the term base in here is when we talk about a strong base. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. When I put sodium hydroxide into water, if I take a million molecules of sodium hydroxide and I put it into water, you can kind of see where this is going. I'm going to get a million sodium ions and a million hydroxide ions. I don't have anything left as sodium hydroxide. Sodium or hydroxide. OK? Makes sense. So a strong base completely comes apart as well. OK? Well, what if something doesn't come completely apart? There are many, many acids that we encounter biologically that, do, that are not strong acids. What would the definition of a, strong, of, a strong, of, a, of a weak acid be based on what I've told you about a strong acid? Well, a weak acid would be something that does not come completely apart. And you go, well, duh, uh, right? It doesn't come completely apart. If I asked you right now to tell me in words what that meant, this is where half of you would struggle. Okay? Because this wasn't hammered into your heads in general chemistry. A weak acid is one that if I put it in water, if I put a million molecules of it in water, only a fraction of those will come apart and make protons, and the remainder will remain as HA. Okay? That's the difference between a weak acid and a strong acid. My favorite weak acid, you're going to hear me talk a decent amount about this weak acid. This weak acid is known as acetic acid, otherwise the active ingredient in vinegar. Okay? Acetic acid is a weak acid. How weak is it? Okay? When you think about vinegar, it's fairly acidic. You get that sort of tea, you get that bite with that thing, right? You can get that bite out of vinegar. You think, well, it must be a reasonably strong acid because I can feel this bite. If I take acetic acid and I put it into water, okay? If I take 50 million molecules of acetic acid and I put it into water, one of them will come apart. One. That's relatively weak compared to, to HCl. If I put 50 million HCLs in there, I get 50 million H's and 50 million Cl minuses. If I put 50 million HACs, where AC refers to the acetate, acetic acid is hydrogen acetate, HAC, okay? I start with 50 million, I end up with one, and I end up with one, which leaves me with 49,999,999. Have I convinced you that acetic acid is a weak acid? I hope so. Okay? It doesn't all come apart. 
then you say, well, why do we give a hoot about it? You're going to drone on and on and on about something we really don't care about. Okay? It turns out that weak acids are essential for life because weak acids allow us to control pH. We have to control pH. Our blood has a pH of about 7.4. If we change the pH of our blood by about, say, 0.2 units, we're dead. Wow, man. I got to quit drinking that vinegar. Right? You hear about this vinegar and honey diet? You know, you go to the tabloids and you see vinegar and honey, honey diet, you lose all this weight and so forth. Wow, man, I'm just going to do something to my blood. No, you're not. And the reason you're not is because your blood is full of weak acids that help maintain that pH no matter what you eat. Now, there are limits. Okay, I wouldn't go wolf down a, a, a liter of hydrochloric acid. Not a good career move. I wouldn't go try oven cleaner. Not a good career move. And even if I kept my pH constant, it would probably dissolve everything else in me so that I'd be dead anyway. Okay, so There's more to life than pH. The reason we have to keep pH constant is for the same reason that we try to keep our temperature constant. Those hydrogen bonds. We're back to the hydrogen bonds. We start screwing up with the hydrogen bonds. We're going to start screwing up the structures of molecules. And we screw up the structure of enough proteins. We screw up the structure of our nucleic acids. We're in deep doo-doo. Okay? Now, I haven't told you why or how that weak acids help us to maintain that pH, but I will. Okay? How am I doing on time? Good. Going well. How are you guys doing? Questions? The more questions you ask, the slower I'll go. But you say, no, don't go slow. We want you to learn as much as we can in this class, right? I think that is a no. Yes, ma'am. Say it again. Yes. Okay, so Lewis acids and Lewis bases can be defined in terms of electrons, and they're defined in terms of electrons with respect to chemical reactions. But in terms of ionization that's happening inside of biological systems, we're talking almost solely about, uh, about protons. Okay? That simplifies it a lot. It simplifies it a lot. Okay? All right. So this figure has got a couple things I want to I define for you before, as we go on. So you notice I said I didn't like the term base. Well, you can look at this guy and you say, well, that guy over there is a base because if I take that reaction to the left, it can grab a proton and it anything absorbs a proton is a base. And by definition, that's correct. But I don't like that term. The reason I don't like that term is I can think of what a weak acid is. What's a weak base? Define it for me. It's hard to define. I have a hard time defining it. A strong base is easy to define. Completely comes apart, completely is ready to absorb protons. What's a weak base? Doesn't completely come apart? I'm not sure what that means. Okay? Weak bases are hard to define. So I don't define them. This would be what we would call a weak base. We're not going to call weak bases weak bases. We give them a different name. The name I give them is a salt. This is a salt, and this is an acid. There's two terms I want you to know. So when we look at the dissociation of a weak acid, and we're looking at a weak acid here on the, on the screen, when we look at the dissociation of a weak acid, the molecule which has the most protons is the weak acid, period. This proton is not an acid, contrary to what you might have thought from general chemistry. The proton is not an acid. The proton is a proton. Okay? We have weak acid, we have proton, we have salt. 